Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. It is Wednesday, February 10th. Thank you very much for tuning in to our YouTube channel. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So today I want to talk a little bit about trading in the direction of the bigger trend. It's pretty much all I do. I'm looking for setups that are pullbacks within the bigger uptrend. Today, we're going to look at some in some industrial metals related ETFs, some energy related ETFs, and the airline ETF. We'll start with some basic trend metrics to define the bigger trend. We use RSI to define oversold conditions, and then price patterns in Stoke RSI to transition from setup to signal. And once they're in the trade, I'll show you an example using the ATR trailing stop. Let's hit the charts. So the first thing I do when I sit down and I look at a chart is I have a couple of objective, emphasis on the objective indicators that tell me the direction of the trend, the bigger trend. And you know, we don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out the trend on this chart because first prices are going from the lower left to the upper right. Second, we're well above a rising 200-day moving average. And then third, I've got this 125-day fast stochastic, and it has been above 60, which is my bullish threshold there since mid-July, and that coincided with that break above the 200-day. So I've got three indications that are pointing to a clear and present uptrend. So what does that mean? Well, when you have an uptrend, that makes it easy because it sets your trading bias. In other words, you pretty much ignore bearish setups. Sure, there are going to be pullbacks along the way. We don't know how deep they're going to go or how long they're going to last. But a pullback is an opportunity to partake in the uptrend. So how do we identify those pullbacks? Well, I've got a couple of indicators here. Also, we can do some basic chart analysis, which is usually my preferred method. But since we've had this uptrend, we've had two playable pullbacks. The first one was here in September, and we get this kind of flag wedge thing and a breakout. And the second one is here in January, and we also got a flag type pattern and a breakout. And while I'm at it, I just want to talk about how short-term support levels are really red herrings. They're designed for distraction to throw you off. You know, here's a short-term support break. Well, come on, you know, that's a consolidation, basically. Here's another short-term support break, and that's just setting up the next mean reversion bounce. So let's get to mean reversion. What are we looking for? So we know the trend is up. So for a mean reversion setup, we're looking for RSI, which is this indicator here, to move into its oversold zone which I characterize as between 30 and 50. And so you can see here in September, October, we get into that zone, and we did that here in January and February. So when we get to that zone, it tells us, hey, we've got a pullback, a consolidation within an uptrend. It's time to be on alert for a potential breakout. And then we can go to the charts, or we can use something that is a little more sensitive, and that would be Stoke RSI. And that is basically the stochastic oscillator applied to RSI. So it adds, it's like giving Red Bull to RSI to give it a little bit more energy. As you can see, RSI, you know, 14 period especially, you know, it kind of trends a little bit. You see it trends down here. Well, the, this is trending up. It's just losing momentum, but that's not a bearish loss of momentum. But back to Stoke RSI. So you get RSI into the oversold zone. Stoke RSI is flirting with that 0.20 area, and then boom, you get this little momentum pop above 0.80, and that coincides with the little breakout there. And you can see here in the second week of February, we get this momentum pop above 0.80, and there's that little breakout there. So on this chart, it looks like we are continuing this uptrend with this breakout that we have here in DBB, the Base Metals ETF. 
So here's an ETF that's a little bit related to base metals. There's a lot of steel stocks in this ETF, the XME, the Metals and Mining SPDR here. And first of all, the trend is up. We can see that the Stoke Close indicator or stochastic, full stochastic, turned bullish there in July. We're above a rising 200-day moving average here. So the long-term trend is up and prices are moving from the lower left to the upper right. Now we can see an example of some pullbacks. Now this pullback really overstayed its welcome. It lasted a long time. It wasn't a pullback, it was a consolidation above the 200 day. And you know, sometimes you're gonna get a little bit of noise in these tight consolidations. So you can see here, we get RSI into that oversold zone and we got a stochastic pop here but we fell back to the 200 day. So that's a bit of a whipsaw there. Those are gonna happen. But we're still in that oversold zone. We still got the setup and we get another pop here. And that's a signal too. And we fell back a little bit, RSI back into that 40, 30 to 50 zone and another pop. And that one was a dandy. So that one paid for a couple of whipsaws that you might've had. So looking at the chart now, we basically have this kind of flag-like pullback. So you had a really sharp advance, basically, and then you correct back. And you can see there's support here from these lows, but you know, I'm about to give up on support with ETFs because it really is a nebulous thing here because you know, here's this support break that didn't amount to much. It was the red herring. I really wanna focus on the patterns and the oversold conditions within an uptrend. So the pattern is the bull flag here. And then we're oversold because RSI is in that 30 to 50 zone. Stoke RSI is flirting in that 0.2 area. And then we get the momentum pop and we get the flag breakout. So this looks like a bullish breakout to me on the chart. And now you're in the trade management stage. You decide if you want to put a profit target on it, if you want to have a trailing stop on it, somehow an ATR trailing stop, which you can find on Stock Charts ACP. I'll show you that in a second here. Uh, but that's the second setup here related to metals. So here I am on Stock Charts ACP, and you see the little plug icon in the lower right. Well, if you click that, you can see the plugins that are available from Stock Charts. And I've got the Trend Investor Pro Indicator Edge plugin. And on the left, you can see I've chosen the ATR trailing stop. Direction is long, calculated from the close. Trigger price is the close. We'll go into that in a minute. And we go up here, we can see the ATR multiplier is 22. Sorry, the ATR periods is 22. The multiplier is two. So this is that red line here. So we've got a breakout and I put that ATR trailing stop. And what it does is as long as prices move higher, this is going to trail and it's gonna be two ATR 22 values below the highest close. So at this point, there is the highest close and we haven't gone above it. So that's why the ATR trailing stop flattened. So what I usually do is when we have a breakout here, I put an initial stop based on the low right before the breakout. Now I'm not gonna use this low. I think it's a, kind of a spiky uh, low. I would use this low here just below 32.50. And if this moves higher, keep that ATR trailing stop there. This is the Stoke Close indicator as well. And it is part of the indicator edge plug in to help you define the overall trend. So an ETF that I like to use to track the energy complex is the DBE ETF from Invesco, DB Deutsche Bank Energy Fund. And if you look at this ETF, I'm on the Invesco website here, and you can see the holdings here. So it's got WTI crude, uh, New York Harbor, uh, gasoline, Brent crude, natural gas. So it's as good as a representative of the energy complex as you can find out there. 
So here is DBE on the chart and the trend is up here. And, you know, sometimes we don't get RSI into that 30 to 50 zone or 40 to 50 zone for a playable pullback. You can see here in December, it didn't get there. But then you can use Stoke RSI on its own if you want to be a little bit more granular or short-term oriented. As you can see, there was a, a bigger pullback here, but that was below the 200-day and a bigger breakout there that was bullish. Stoke Close was already bullish here, or Stoke, full stochastic in August. And then you can see along the way, we had these really little pullbacks, very tight consolidations. And most recently, it was a very tight flag-like consolidation. And so Stoke RSI gets down to point two as momentum flattens short term. And then boom, there's the pop and there's the breakout. And so with this breakout, we're getting pops as well in the energy related ETFs. So here is a excerpt from Thursday's ETF report on trendinvestorpro.com. I cover a lot of ETFs on Thursdays and highlight the setups. And what I do here is I've got the chart and then I've got the commentary just to the right, which makes it really easy to follow. And there's that flag that we had in DBE and the little ones along the way and the breakout. And then we had a breakout as well in XES and a little pennant there and a breakout and then the flag. And there you can see RSI moving just below 50, barely got into that oversold zone and got that flag breakout, and that was Wednesday's close the previous week, and it's extended a little bit further since then. But that's just a taste of what we offer on TrendInvestorPro.com. So here is XOP, and it is actually a little bit stronger than XES because it is hitting a new high. It's gotten above that June high here. So, you know, you had a little pennant there as well, a little flag and a breakout and a new high. RSI just getting below 50 and then the stochastic pop. Sometimes you get the flag breakout before the stochastic pop, stoke RSI pop, excuse me. So that's why you got to always be watching the charts to get the leg up and get the edge. So we've got a couple of bigger consolidations I want to show you. These are going on over a month. The uh, first one here is in Jets and is, of course, the airline ETF. But that is a nice little flag-like consolidation. So you had this big breakout move to above that June high. And then we've consolidated. And you can see that RSI has been flirting with that oversold zone for a few weeks now. We had an initial Stoke RSI pop there in mid-January, but fell back, and this sometimes happened. But we've gotten another pop along with this breakout. So it looks like Jets is poised to move higher. It's a very volatile, fairly volatile ETF, as are the energy ETFs. So consider that if you're interested in trading this. There's a little bit of higher risk. So this last one here is IHF, the Healthcare Providers ETF. And if you look at this trend, this is just a slow grinding up trend. You can see the uh, full stochastic oscillator has captured it with that move above 60, and it has not been back below 60, a strong, stable uptrend. We've had a few oversold conditions along the way, and we got one again in late January, early February. Now, you can see the Stoke RSI is still relatively low. It hasn't quite popped yet. And then if we look on the chart, we can see a consolidation. This is like a triangle or something. You know, it's not really a pennant because this move is pretty short compared to the size of the pennant. But, you know, healthcare providers is a pretty choppy uptrend. So you get these little spurts and a long consolidation, a spurt, a long consolidation. So maybe we're about to get another spurt and a continuation of the bigger uptrend. All right, so that concludes this week's edition. Thank you very much for checking out our YouTube channel. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up down there 
or consider subscribing. Also, check out TrendInvestorPro.com if you'd like to know more about our ETF trading and trend-following strategies, as well as at Arthur Hill on Twitter. Thanks again for tuning in, and have a great day.